Are you that golfer who cannot hit that high soft landing pitch shot no matter how hard you try? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that, but I'm also gonna show you how a coin is gonna transform your short game. You do not wanna miss this video. When it comes to hitting the higher softer landing pitch shot, the first thing that you have to realize is that the lie will dictate whether you can play this shot. If you walk up to the ball and you've got an absolute stinker of a lie, you're on really burnt out fairways uh, or maybe you're on hard pan, you're not going to be able to hit this shot. And the reason for it is because the bounce will not allow you to. The number on the bottom of the club, this is a 58 degree wedge with 10 degrees of bounce. That then means that the, the leading edge is going to be 10 degrees off the ground. So if you imagine if I'm hitting off hard pan, that ball is sat right on the dirt. If that leading edge is 10 degrees off the ground, it's going to be very, very hard to get it under the ball. So in that situation, if I'm playing the ball forwards and I'm trying to hit a high soft shot, chances are I'm going to sort of drop kick it and thin it. So again, the lie will determine whether you can play this shot. So let's now jump into what your setup should look like so that you can hit this shot very successfully. So to start with, I don't wanna cheat this. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I want you to play these high soft landing pitch shots and chip shots with a square club face. This then means that we have to have very good mechanics, which we're gonna go into in a couple of minutes. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna have a stance width that is just a little bit wider than a club head. This is gonna put us in a position to where we've got good balance, but we're not gonna move all over the place. Step number two, we're gonna have the ball level with the left heel forwards in our stance. That's gonna allow us to have a relatively shallow angle of attack, still a slight descending blow, but it's also gonna give us time to actually release the club out to present the true loft on the club. Again, helping us hit that high soft landing pitch shot. The final thing is shaft lean. Are we gonna have much? No, we're not. We're gonna have it relatively level to maybe a hair bit of shaft lean. I don't wanna see that shaft go too far back. Again, remember, what that's gonna do is that's actually then gonna increase the bounce, get the leading edge higher off the ground. Ultimately from there, could produce some of those drop kicks or those thin shots. So, a little bit of a wide stance. We're gonna have the ball level with our left heel from there face square, we're not cheating this, face square, and then sharp, pretty level to maybe a little bit of sharp lean right there. So now it's time to talk about the next stage, which is the release. This is super, super important. Now, the biggest issue that I see with players is that they drive the handle way too much. What does this look like? Well, when you start to drive the handle, you might be in the perfect setup position, but if you start to drive it, again, you're gonna be taken off that loft, the leading edge is gonna go down to the ground, you're not gonna be able to produce enough height. Now, the biggest reason as to why players try and drive the handle is actually due to the backswing, how they're setting things up. So if we switch to downline view, you can see now on this angle that when players take the club back and maybe that face is pointing too much down to the ground, in this position to try and add loft, they will drive the handle forwards, tilt their upper body back, and ultimately from there is gonna be extremely difficult to actually hit this shot with any softness and any height. So when you take it back, just make sure that we can get that toe of the club a little bit more up to the sky. One of the favorite analogies that I like to have is imagine you're set up in your setup position and then from there, you're just gonna shake hands with somebody to your right in this position. You can see as I do that, I have a soft amount of fold to my trail arm and my right palm is very much on the side of where the grip would be. So if I just do that a couple times, I'm feeling that soft fold in my elbow. I'm keeping my elbow in front of me and I'm feeling like my palm is going to the side, maybe even up to the sky. If I then place the club back in my hand and I do that motion, you can see from the downline view how that's got the toe pointing very much up to the sky. The elbow is very soft in this position. And from there, this then means that I can release the club downwards. Now, what is the sensation that we're gonna have once we've set it up beautifully in that release? Well, it will be sort of this sensation. I don't know if you've ever been fishing. If you imagine you're sort of fishing, I've never been fishing, but if you sort of cast that club out, that's gonna be the motion that we're feeling. It's gonna be sort of throwing that club slightly down to the ground. But again, we're trying to have very soft wrists as we're doing this. It's not a fast motion. The club is just very much free falling down. And we wanna be feeling like as we're doing this, we're trying to return the loft back. It's okay to let the club head overtake your hands. In fact, I strongly encourage it. Now, the second thing that I would say to do with this is people then get scared. They go, well, son, if I'm starting to let the club head overtake my hands, surely I'm just gonna thin it. I'm just gonna uh, you know, drop kick it. I might even fat it. 
you won't as long as you keep your chest turning. So the second cue I want you to have, so the first one was obviously the backswing. The second one is that just keep that chest turning. So feel like your chest points towards the target in the follow through. These things are gonna allow you to start to throw that club just that little bit better. It's gonna feel very soft, very relaxed. And ultimately from there, you can see, I can really start to pivot through into an awesome position. So here's the moment you've been waiting for. How is this coin going to fix your short game? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this coin and you're gonna place it about an inch to two inches behind the golf ball, just like so right there. Now, if I place it in that position, if I do a good pitch shot with good technique when I'm trying to hit this high soft landing shot, I should be able to hit this shot and also hit the coin in the same fluid motion. Now, if you're that golfer who sets up to the ball and then suddenly we see you start to drive the handle, you will hit a shot like this where the ball will go, but the coin will stay there. Let me show you what the bad one would look like. Just like that, you can see the ball went miles off, the coin stayed there, I drove the handle, came out a little bit thin, quite hot in that situation. Ultimately from there, it's going to be a poor shot. Now, if I grab another golf ball and I pop that coin behind it and I try and do the good technique, my thought here is I am trying to let that club release down to the ground. I'm trying to throw that club slightly so that as I come through, not only can I hit the coin, I can also hit the ball. Now the analogy that I like to use here is imagine you've got your palm and you're skimming it across water. This skimming motion is what the club's gonna be doing. The bounce is gonna take over, it's gonna glide it through, and ultimately from there, you're gonna be able to hit a really good shot. So do a couple of practice swings just inside where you get used to that feeling of letting that club sort of throw down, you're trying to feel what it feels like, and then as I step into the ball, my goal is to not only hit a good pitch shot, but also to make sure that I hit the coin. Let me give it a go for you right here. So I'm just gonna do a little motion. I'm gonna do a little rehearsal swing as I step in. I'm trying to hit the coin and the ball. And as you can see there, that ball came out beautifully soft. Coin went flying back this way. Now here's the final thing that I would say about this drill. Have a bit of fun with it. Try and experiment with how far back you can pull this coin and still hit it and still hit a decent shot. Let me go a little bit more. Let's go a little bit crazy right here. So I've probably gone about maybe a golf ball to a golf ball and a half. Let's push it to nearly two. That's probably about two golf ball widths right there. Comment down below before you watch this, do you think I can hit a successful chip with that coin being probably about two golf balls behind the golf ball I'm about to hit? So hopefully you've commented. If it's a yes or a no, let's find out. Let me give it a go. Let's see if I can hit that coin back there and produce a decent functional pitch shot that comes out nice and high, nice and soft. So remember, always have fun when you're practicing. This is a great way to make it nice and fun. Club face nice and square, good setup. Let's see if I can hit that coin and still hit a good shot. And the answer is yes. In fact, that was probably the best one, the highest launching one, the softest one yet. So it goes to show that taking things to the extreme or pushing yourself a little bit more can really help you develop your short game. Give that coin drill a go. I guarantee you will start to hit some higher soft landing pitch shots that are gonna transform your short game. If you have questions about this, please ask away down in the comments. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you back here soon.